Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Inspire with Carrie, um, where uh, business owners and leaders share their inspiring and encouraging stories. Uh, for tonight, we have Teresa Hopkins, the owner of Creative Woodcuts and Designs. And I'm so excited to interview her about her company and more about her story. So without further ado, Miss Teresa Hopkins. So, Hi. hello. <laughs> so, Miss <laughs> Teresa, um, I wanted to ask you, um, your company, Creative Woods Cuts and Designs, what exactly do you do? What I do is I cut, um, it started off being just cutting wood and block letters. Like you see the letters in um, Michael's or Hobby Lobby, right. you know, just yeah, different yeah. with the alphabet letters. So it started off being that, but then it went into, um, Cutting images, state cutouts, um, logos, just anything that could be cut out, basically, made out of wood, um, is what I'm doing. Awesome, awesome. And when did you start this company? It started in 2020, once COVID, when we was in, um, after COVID hit, and right. quarantine. <laughs> so it started at the end of 2020, is when it, it started. Um, it didn't start as being a business. Okay. It was just a start to help Brittany. Okay. Your daughter. Um, out in her business. Yeah. yeah. And then it grew into what it is now. Awesome. Awesome. And so um, I'm curious because I know that you've worked in finances and then you used to be a hairdresser. I, I assume you kind of alluded to it with COVID and stuff, but what made you make um, this transition to this career because it is quite different than hairstyling and um, it is. <laughs> finances. So what? How? Why did you start with this? What? What kind of? It is. Uh, jump start it is. That? And, and I and I still do finances. Yes, um, you do. I should clarify. I yes. still do that. Um, I don't do hair anymore. Right. But um, starting into into the cutting wood, um, doing creative wood cuts. Like I said, it started off helping Brittany. Mm -hmm. um, with her business. Right. And it kind of grew from there. And then I figured out, oh, I really like doing this because I really like making things with my hands. And um, when you see some, when you make something and somebody be like, oh my God, I like it, this looks so good. Yeah. It just gives you a different feel about it. And um, so it just kind of, I was like, okay, I really like doing this. And taking, uh, see, being able to see an image and then creating it from wood to bring it to life was just, a whole different thing so I enjoyed doing that so but it, it was just something I love and I still love doing it so when when I figured out I can do this well not well when I was doing it like I get up in the morning and I was working on it and then I look and be like oh it's midnight and I'm still doing this but I love doing it it wasn't like it was a job or it was hectic it was like oh I really like doing this so did that kind of surprise you that um that you did enjoy doing it? Cause I'm curious if you've ever kind of dabbled in it before just for fun, just making stuff or like, did that kind of surprise you? Like, oh, I really like that. Where you are, we kind of doing stuff like that a little bit. Well, what I was doing, what I liked doing was DIY stuff. Like I like painting right. walls and um, fixing up things. I like doing that type of things, but actually cutting wood, I never thought I would do that. And when I first tried it, it was actually an epic fail. We bought this machine and we was like, oh, let's see if we can cut this to make this happen. And stuff was flying everywhere, <laughs> blades jumping out everywhere. And I was like, I can't, I don't know what to do with this thing. So it sat, the machine actually sat for about six months. Then it was like, okay, let's try this again. And I just kind of picked it up and it was like, okay, we got it. So it just went from there. I like how you said you stopped for six months and you got back into it. Cause I think with so many people, it's, you know, it's easy to kind of start something. You would get discouraged if it was complete disaster and it would make you think, okay, I'm not gonna ever, ever do that again. What made you yeah. kind of, cause I think it would be great for our audience to hear this if they're going through something where it's like, oh, I, I think this is gonna be great. I'm excited. And then it kind of is like, womp womp. Like, what yeah. did you tell the audience to make them, to kind of encourage them to get back and, and try it again and not just give up? For me, it was a challenge. It was like, 
I can do this. This is this is not going to defeat me. I don't pay my money for this machine. We're going to use this machine. Right. At some point, you know, um, and I'm not a person, a stickler of taking things back. I will if I have to, but right. me returning things is just probably not going to happen. But um, it was like, okay, let's give this another try. And so I just didn't give up. I, I um, And it was a challenge. I'm, I love a challenge. Like, yeah. Let's let's get this done, and it, it worked. And then it wasn't that somebody was teaching me. I actually just watched like a YouTube video, and it was like, okay, let's do this. So every the things that I do now, I kind of taught myself how to do it. I didn't really like. I didn't go to a class. I haven't yeah. been to a class or workshops or anything like that. It's kind of like I can see it being done, and it's like, okay, let me figure out how to right. do this. Yeah. I love that because I think there's something to be said about if if you have something you're passionate about of kind of you taking what you've got already and stuff saying, you know, I'll wait till this class happens or that class happens and just saying, you know what, I'm going to figure out how to do this myself. And it's great that we do live, um, you know, it's not the 80s or 90s anymore. You can go right on YouTube and search how to do yeah. stuff. And I mean, use the resources you have, I say. Um, I have a question because I know you did hairstyling and, and then you used to uh -huh. do DIY. Like, is there anything that you kind of learned doing that that you think benefits what you do now with the wood cutting business? Well, with finances, um, what I do now, I think it's problem solving because for me, finances, what I like about finances is not counting numbers. Okay. It's the problem solving that I enjoy about it, about solving the problem. Let's figure this out. So that's what I brought over into the wood cutting. It's like somebody gives me an image or give me something to be like, oh, can we do this? Be like, okay, let's figure this out. Let's, right. it's, you know, let's. I'm a problem solver, so yeah. um, I took that part from the financing of it. Um, I'm just solving problems. Yeah. Um, I have a question. What is your favorite thing that you've ever designed that you're just like, uh, I love it. This is the one I'm most proud of. Like, what's what's just the, the I, well, you know, I'll separate this into two questions. What mm -hmm. is your favorite thing to make? And then what's the thing that you've made that you're the most proud of? The favorite thing to make now are the business logos. Those are my favorite things to make. Um, the the thing that I made that I absolutely love was actually the first logo I did. Um, I didn't paint it or design it. It was just a wood cutout. Um, and I had this girl, this young lady contacted me and she was like, oh, I want a, um, my business name done. And she was like, you can do it however you want to do it. Yeah. So I saw her logo and I was like, I absolutely love her logo. Yeah. It was just fire. It was yeah. like, um, her name was is, is Nicole and it was all nicked up. It's her logo. And I still to this day love her logo. And it was like, if I can just keep this for myself, I would. But it was no purpose <laughs> for me keeping it. But I just, I don't know why. It was just something about her logo just kind of stuck with me. So her is so far is my favorite guy. What's the most challenging thing about what you do, about uh, the business? The most challenging thing um, probably would be, I don't know. It's not that it's not challenging. No, at all. no, no, yeah. <laughs> but um, I guess different, the different tools that you have to use. Like somebody may ask me to do something that's really really big and it's kind of like okay how am I going to do this because yeah. I I don't work out of a big warehouse or right. have all these machines that can you know cut all these things out for me I'm kind of doing them all by hand um, but I don't know if I had okay I would say the biggest challenge for me is when somebody gives me a, an image mm -hmm. that's not they draw it for instance they just sketch it be like oh let me sketch this out and let me, can you make this for me? I'm not an artist, so. Oh. <laughs> I, okay, y'all, it may look like I'm an artist, but I am right. not. But those are challenging because I have to figure out, okay, how I'm gonna take this image they drew, put it into this computer to, you know, design it or whatever. So that's, that's challenging. Um, it's worked so far. 
Um, and also because I have Jasmine, mm -hmm. uh, my and daughter, that's your is an artist. Your oldest daughter. Yes, Just for the who is an artist. So sometimes I can be like, hey, can you draw this for me so yeah. I can, you know, kind of put it in the format that I need it to be in. But a sketch, a hand sketch is probably the most challenging thing. But we've got them all done so far. So I haven't had a lot of them, but yeah, um, the ones that we I've done, they've come out pretty good. I'm, I'm curious because you started your business in 2020 and from what I see, it seems to already be very, very successful and like exploded. What do you credit that success to? I credit that success to God. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it is God, um, you know, Pastor Pray, he spoke a word over the business because I don't do, when I first started out, I didn't do advertising. I didn't, at yeah. first I wasn't even on like Instagram and Facebook that much with it. Right. But um, a lot of it came from like when people would ask Brittany, where did you get your letters from? Yeah, yeah. And then at first she wouldn't, she wouldn't say she wanted me to be her, you know, her hidden gem. Like her close partner or something? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, no, if this is going to be a business, I, you know, I got to expect that. That's right. So it, it started off um, getting referrals from her followers. Okay. And then they would refer people and they would come back and um, it just kind of grew from there. So. I did eventually do like small ads on on, on Etsy and yeah. um, post more on Instagram and you know Facebook, but I still don't do a whole lot of heavy advertising. At right, all. right. May I so guess a lot that? of business come from, and it, I have a lot of repeat um, yeah. customers because they most of my customers are resin artists, um, and so they're constantly you know, buying letters or shapes or whatever for their own business, but they, you know, buying it, using me to buy the wood or whatever. So, I mean, to get the wood cut out. So, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's, it's grown a lot, but all credit goes to God for mm -hmm. that. Cause it's not like I'm known for wood cutting for like 10 years or something like that. Yeah. And I mean, I think that is interesting. Um, because that goes to my next question because I think you know it's interesting I think when you're in your 20s you could do like a whole bunch of stuff and you know try stuff and people are like okay that's cool because that's what your 20s are for and I feel like once you get in your 30s people kind of expect like okay like this is what you do and you need to kind of stick with it if you kind of veer off people are like okay that's interesting did you get anything like that like were any people like skeptical like why are you doing this <laughs> I I had people that was surprised a lot of people were surprised. Like, yeah. oh, you made that? <laughs> yeah. Like, where did this come from? Like, you know, because they only know me for, you know, finances or, or doing hair. Right. And, um, but it, I didn't get a lot of kickback, like, you shouldn't be doing this Good. kind yeah, of yeah. thing. <laughs> Nothing like that. Yeah. But, um, but it was, it was a little surprising for some people. And then for my family, maybe not so much mm -hmm. because it's kind of like, the background of my family or what they do painters and yeah builders and that kind yeah. of thing but um i don't think people expected me to do what i do now yeah so but it's it was it's not a negative pushback at all but oh, yeah. a lot of people were surprised that i can actually do be like oh how do you do this yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't surprised i mean because i knew that you did diys um s stuff so but it's kind of like oh wow and then what i love is you're not just like okay in it you're really really good in it because i feel like sometimes when people try stuff it's just like oh okay i mean yeah you're good I mean. <laughs> but you're like you're not you're more than good you're like really excellent in it like and you're really you. excellent doing hair too so i mean that's a blessing and finances you're really um you really excel at the stuff you do what's kind of your target I guess client. You typically tend to do pieces for homes, or if you tend to do pieces for organizations or businesses. Like, is it more personal business? Like, who are the who are the people who most who order from you the most? I should say. The most, the people that order from me the most are resin artists. Yeah. People yeah. like what Brittany does with yeah. the keys, and uh, you have other ladies that make 
well, they all kind of do different things. They make clocks and keys yeah. and letters and um, whatever images or whatever. But they probably 95% of, of my customers are resin artists. Okay. And then I've had, um, I've had charities like schools and mm-hmm. um, nonprofit organizations and things like that that have done things for um, whatever groups they may have. Um, it's not a whole lot, but mostly, mostly it's resin artists. It's, it's the target artists. Um, target target audience um, yeah. that I have. Why should people go to you instead of like a Hobby Lobby or something? Like, what separates you from other businesses that have like the wooden letters or the wooden pieces? What? Why should they go to you? The thing that separates is because when you go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels, um, they have limited supply. Mm-hmm. So you may go and you have you looking for. Um, a S and a T, right? And you need five of each, and they only have yep. two in the store. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> you're limited to only getting what they have, or you got to store hop to try to find all these places. Yes. <laughs> I can to make all my pieces. So when you order, you can order five letters. You can order fifty letters. Yeah. It's no limit to what you, how many you can get, because it's not, it's not going to run out of stock. Right. So because I'm all custom made, so I think that's what separates me from. Me. From them having to go to stores or even having to, if you want a special image or something, you can't just walk into Michael's or Hobby Lobby or any store and be like, okay, can you make this cut for me and can you write this on it? You know, something like that. So, you you know, you can't do that. But with me, you can come and say, hey, I need a heart and can you cut, write this, name? can you engrave these names on it or and all those kind of things, so. Well, I'll say, I'm sorry. I know, I was just saying that's what sets it apart. I'll say I have ordered from you and um, I mean, your pieces really are really excellent. They're high quality and you know, you send a nice handwritten note. And yeah, yeah, uh, so I would, I'm actually gonna say I recommend to anyone if you need anything. And, and I think what I love is, yeah, you're great for businesses that, you know, if you do, um, the artistry and you need the actual wood pieces that's great but also even for personal like i've used your stuff for like christmas decor so you Mm -hmm. do it all and what i like is my home's neutral so i kind of like just that wooden piece without Mm -hmm. maybe the paint and all that so i think if you're someone who kind of has a neutral home you will love her pieces and um yeah she can really really make it all um i do want to just kind of and then on a really positive note, what what would you say to people? You kind of already gave, gave us some encouraging words, like when you were saying how for the six months, you know, mm-hmm. you bounce back. But what would you say to people who want to do a career switch and maybe they're feeling um, discouraged or apprehensive? What, what advice do you have for them? I would say don't be afraid to step out mm-hmm. because when you get to a certain point in your life, you kind of want to, sometimes you kind of want to do something different. Yeah. Like I, I want to do something different. Like, even though I still do finances, it's kind of mm-hmm. like, oh, do I still want to do this? You know? Yeah. But I would say don't be afraid to, to step out because it's the thing there's sometimes there's things that you actually just love to do. And that's, yeah kind of like your happy place yeah it's kind of like you, you're at peace with it you don't right. want to be wrestling with and doing things that you really don't love and you oh my god it's just hey how can go do this but i'll be like just step out on faith and don't be scared to do it that's a i mean i agree i think that's such a great feeling to wake up in the morning and not dread what you're about to do like yes I, yeah no one wants to have to do that and then also what um, and you can list as many as you have. What are some secrets to um, success that you have for the audience for just how to have a successful business? Because you're also really, um, you're, you're really well versed in, in finances too. So you can even give some of that advice, you know, if you want to as well. So yeah, what advice do you have for the business owners for business success? Well, I would say um, have a plan. Um, n- have goals, set goals, have plans um, to set out. You and then some. You have to, sometimes you have to pace yourself because I got into it and it's like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, I want to do that, and then that kind of gets you you all over the place. And it's kind of like pace yourself. Let's master this one thing and then let's move to the next thing. Um, 
you also want to have um we're talking about finances still you got to have a plan you got to be organized a lot of business owners entrepreneurs um actually don't know much about you know the business side of what they do but you still have to have a basic knowledge of it like um you got to know what you got coming in what you have going out um you got to have some sense even though you may not take care of your taxes and different things like that. I believe everyone needs to have a basic sense of, of what they need to keep track of. Um, and sitting down and um, at the end of the day or at the end of the week and, and writing things down like, um, okay, this is what I had coming in, this is what I had going out, this is what I need to do, let me set a budget. So. I can actually see my money working because sometimes we get into it in the beginning and a lot of times what you're making is going right back out. So it's like, what am I doing this for? Because I'm not really making any money. Yeah. And sometimes you don't set limits, especially like expenses. Um, we don't set a limit and we just buy, 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 buy. So I um, read this book, it's called Profit First. It, it's a really great book and it, it kind of teaches you a different um, way of looking at at your finances. It's kind of like you setting it up so you can make your profits where you can see it. You're setting a limit. If I have 20% of my income coming in or revenue coming in for expenses, that's all I can spend. I can't go outside of that. So you have to make it work. You know, it, it and it works. It actually does work. But um, just being mindful of what, you know, what you have coming in and what you have going out is basically um, a good thing to know in your business. Very, very well. Well, um, thank you so much um, for, thank you. for speaking to me about your business and, and sharing uh, your tidbits of wisdom because I'm, I'm going to I'm listen to the advice you're giving and it's it's great reminder, um, just those principles to have for your business. And um, I'm going to make sure we have all of your information, like your website, okay. business name, and all of that at the end, so people can look you up. I suggest you all follow her on like Instagram. She has really cool reels, and um, and I, I think it, what you do, what I love is, I think it's nice to see women in particular do kind of something that seems so masculine with like the wood and clay wood and all that. I think that's so yeah. cool. Um, you know, I, I want my daughter to see images of women doing things that maybe we think stereotypically just men are supposed to do. And I, I love yeah. that. And I think that's super, super cool. I love how you uh, glorify God in what you do and um, just your, your, your spiritual walk and, and all of that. And I think that will really, really inspire people. So thank you so much, Miss Teresa Thank Hopkins. you. Thank you for having and, me. <laughs> yes. And thank you all so much for watching this episode of Inspire with Carrie. If you or someone you know um, would like to be a guest on our show, if you can think of someone that you think would be a great guest on the show, please email me at my email. You'll see that at the ending credits or you can message me on social media. You'll see all of that at the end of the episode. And thank you again so much for watching. Bye.